Okay, so thanks for joining us. Welcome to Jits Quips. This is, this is Greg versus the bad guys, by the way, who's done one class. Yeah, he's um, giving it the big in as well. His ex girlfriend, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> I'm, I'm just as curious about their past relationship <laughs> as I am to how this match is going to go. I think how it goes, we'll be able to determine. So it looks like know. Kim is being gentle with Greg. Pass there, go back step on that now. Yes. Yeah, pass his fucking guard. <laughs> yes. Yes, chin strap underneath. Yeah, threaten that guillotine. Get the other arm involved. Okay, there we go. Get your left leg out. I'd, I would love this. I know, yeah. Start sliding that left leg out so your knee's out. Greg thought he was going to have a bit of a laugh here. <laughs> Ended up getting fucking smoked <laughs> by a lady who's done one class. <laughs> She's got quite a good base to be fair. She's doing the fucking splits. Yeah. Greg would be fucked here if she knew what he was doing. <laughs> oh, <my goodness. laughs> Try and get on your side a little bit, Kim. Yeah, more, turn your hips more to over to your left. Nice. Perfect with the knee. Nice. Good. That was good. Greg really struggling here to pass this guard. Yeah, just give him the little Wagner Rocha fella, just stomp his <laughs> chest. Greg having to pull out the big guns here. Slices through. Doesn't doesn't block the hip after it, nice. She's actually retaining the guard and really well. <laughs> like Greg's either terrible at controlling the hips or Greg absolutely making a meal out of this. He's got a head and arm isolated. He's choosing not to get his head towards the mat. Keep turning, keep back. turning towards him. Holding that nice and loose. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Greg, for pulling that off the back. Just about. <laughs> <Just about. laughs> Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Jits Quips. So, thanks for joining us, guys. Doing, um, today we've got Connor, uh, we've got Anthony, and we've got Ed on the show. Um, so, Connor and Anthony are from uh, uh, training out of Trident Martial Arts Gym. Um, and Ed, what gym are you training out of? The Pound Martial Arts in Bangor, North Wales. Okay. Uh, so, we guess. Uh, at the gym today, and um, you're, you're gonna have uh, a couple of matches, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> he's already we've already yeah, done them, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're gonna see them uh, later on in the uh, in the pod. Um, so the feature match is uh, with you and Reese Shakeshaft. Yeah, yeah. Um, so gentlemen, um, it's Connor's first time on the show and Ed's yes. first time on the show. We've had Duffy on a couple of times now. Yeah. Um, and I've been trying to think of ways to get to know the guests first. I thought the best way to do that would be to ask que uh, a question um, that has come from my knowledge of you already. So from, from how I know you already, uh, what do I want to know about you, basically? Um, so... Connor, uh, how long have you been doing BJJ? Uh, just over five years now. 2000, January 2019 I started. Um, January 2019. How old were you when you started? 24. 24? Mm-hmm. And then trained, trained at Next Gen for a little bit. Covid happened, so I sort of didn't really train during Covid. And then when Harry and Steve opened this place, I've been here since day one, really. Uh -huh. So that's been about three and a half years now. Did, did um, Harry and Steve train at Next Gen before here? Yeah. So you, you knew them from there, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, they were they were pretty much my main coaches at Next Gen. It was the Widow one I went to. I didn't really go to the Hobo one. I did for a couple of seminars, but mm -hmm. they were the main coaches at the Widow one. So I sort of built up that relationship with them. So when they did leave and opened this place, I was like, see you. Them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and... What I see of you, Connor, is you're a very consistent uh, 
tra- uh, at your training. Mm-hmm. So ever since I've started uh, BJJ here, like from the very first day that I came, you were here, and um, like the the two, uh, the one and a half, uh, almost two years that I've trained here, mm-hmm. you're uh, you're always training, you're always competing mm-hmm. as well. Um, so it's safe to say that you love BJJ. Yeah, yeah, I do all of it. Um, and uh, let me, it's, it's safe to say that we all love BJJ, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but so I wanted to know before you found BJJ mm-hmm. twenty four. Um, first of all, how did you, uh, like, what other pastimes did you engage in? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, well, when I was a kid, football was my main one. And then I got to 16, 17, stopped playing football, started going out with my mates. And then I started going to the gym, doing weights. When I was 18, I was, like, nine stone, so I'm where, like, I was really skinny. Started going to the gym, doing weights. Um, can I just say that, like you said, you started going out with, with your mates, and I think think that is a legitimate pastime. Like, I yeah, like, I like to party. You yeah, know, like, pretty still much. Do, so, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I was going out with my mates. I was eighteen years old. Do you know what I mean? So when you first start going out, that was it. Um, but I, I was always physically active, but I'd never stepped foot in any sort of combat gym before. But getting into jits, I'd watched UFC and stuff. Mm-hmm. So started watching. Can remember me mate showing me old videos of like Anderson Silva and Fedor and all stuff like that, and I was like, oh, that's pretty sick. And then started watching a little bit to UFC, and that was when McGregor was like coming up and quite big. And then I was always like, oh, I'd love to do that, but I never sort of took that next step and actually done anything about it. Yeah. And then one day I was at a um, work night out with one of my mates to watch the UFC, and we were smashed, just talking shit. And um, pretty much we were like, right, we're going to go and we're going to do it. And we both went, well, the next day I found, I, I googled MMA gyms. Texted them, like, can I come down? They were like, yeah, come down. Um, we both went to the first session together and then he never came to the second one and I've been coming ever since. You carried on? Yeah. Nice. I, when I, when, like, after my first like, couple of sessions, I was like, yeah, I'm, I need to get good at this. Yeah. And that was it, really. Was it MMA sessions? Um, I'd done both at first, yeah. I'd done the JITs and the MMA. It was, like, I think at the time there was only one MMA there. And then the other MMA session was wrestling. We just wrestled on a Tuesday. So the more I'd done it, the more I gravitated more towards the grappling because I was doing that, like, five times a week. But I was only doing the MMA, like, once. As in, when I say MMA, the striking aspect of MMA either way. But, and then ever since then, I've just been grappling since, really. Um, so I think uh, I've got, like, I think this might be a common question for me because it, cause it, it kind of fascinates me a bit. Um, like, how people were, or how uh, combat sports practitioners were before they started um, practising. Mm-hmm. And, like... Um, were you aggy? Like, were you a bit aggy uh, out and about or anything like that? Or like, did you ever get into any scraps? Or did you have really, a reputation? Or? Not really, no. no. Nah. No. Like, obviously, I had a few fights in school and stuff as a kid, but not, not going out with my mates. I've never been one of them who goes out looking for a fight. Mm-hmm. It was more just the... I remember watching UFC and seeing people getting triangled and armbarred and shit and being like, mate, like, imagine learning how to do that. That would be sick, do you know what like I mean? Super so, mm, I was like, that would be sick to learn how to do. So it was never from a, like, oh, I'm dead hard, I'm going to do this. It was more just, that looks cool, I'd like to learn. And then when, once I started doing it, the more you do it, the more you're like, it's like a drug then, isn't it? Nice. Just, like, yeah, I need to get yeah, yeah. This. So I've always had addictive personality, I'd say that. Yeah. So once I got into this, I was like, this is a good thing to get addicted to, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Oh, that's cool, man. You did it off your own steam as well. Just yeah. knew it, made it happen. Yeah, I mean, I, well, everyone does really, don't they? I mean, yeah. some people have mates and stuff who uh, maybe get them more into it now, but I guess you're right. you've got to take the step yourself, haven't you? Otherwise, yeah. you know, once you do, once you take the first first few weeks, it's a bit like, oh, feel a bit of weird depth, but mm. everyone's sound, aren't they? Yeah. What it's one of the sure. hardest parts, that, isn't it? Mm. A lot of people actually just walking into somewhere. Yeah. Start yeah. It the first yeah. time, yeah. Um, I heard a cool quote the other day. It was like uh, someone asked someone, I can't remember who it was, um, how long does it take your average uh, person to become a black belt? Mm. And the answer is the average person doesn't become a yeah. black belt. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, yeah, thanks for that, uh, Connor. 
Um, so, Ed, you're the guest here, so I'll ask you this. So, you're, um, uh, you practice MMA, right? Yeah. You train MMA, uh, which is, which is uh, this is a guess now, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, striking. striking. Yeah, the full spectrum, yeah. Full spectrum. So yeah. Those are the sessions you do, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, striking? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, and no, no more than that? Um, when you say no more, in terms of what? Like, uh, do you do, like, will you have a session where it's like wrestling against the cage? Yes, we do. We do, we do have a cage wrestling sessions on Saturday uh -huh. and on Tuesdays. So, mm -hmm. I suppose, yes, yeah, MMA that we do, you know, mostly. They, you know, they do kickboxing sessions and Muay Thai sessions and things, but more often than not, I'm going to do the MMA sessions. We're in the cage, we're doing drills in the cage. So that's where I'll spend most of my time training. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, so I went to your first fight. Yes. Yeah. Was it two years ago? Nearly two years ago. Yeah. Um, and uh, you got the L. Yep. So um, you're up against some whippersnapper. Sharpshooter. Eighteen <laughs> years old. Yeah, young lad. Um, Prospect. Me, mate, throw in, uh, was it roundhouse? Spinning wheel kicks. Spinning wheel kicks. And, um, <laughs> From the beginning, yeah, caught me in my chin. Caught you in the first round, right? And, yeah. Uh, you, did he come he didn't put me out. No, no, no. Did he come from like a type of Orlando background or I something like that? I because think so. That's a that's a for shot selection wise. That's quite a hard kick to land. It's been a real kick. Yeah. And it was his um, first it's one. Even more so. Even more <laughs> yeah. so in MMA. His first one, but he's been doing Taekwondo for fifteen years. Did he the reason with him when you're saying there about what, what disciplines does that that entail? Do like I mean, obviously you mentioned there Western boxing, Muay Thai, wrestling, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or some kind of submission grappling art. They're, they're the big four, aren't they? Yeah. But then there'll be ancillaries from other sports. So whereas a lot of a lot of times people say that won't work in taekwondo or that won't work in karate, it won't work in MMA. Um, well, it won't if that's that's all you've got. But when you can start bringing in the the the, the high um, sort of like the high risk, if you want to call it that, techniques, spinning wheel kicks, jumping attacks, things like that. The reason that they'll work is if you've got it. A decent base and mm. you know how to sprawl and you've got a bit of wrestling things like that then you can start you know pardon the pun wheeling them other thing, things out it's un the unorthodox steps. isn't it as well because it's a lot of people aren't used to people who are, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because there's, there's not going to be that many people who are even sparring in the gym who are training isn't it? Like yeah yeah you don't want to be you don't want to be like, like the pyramid thing again isn't it so you don't want to be you, the majority of your training to be on defending like spinning wheel kicks and just the same way you don't want the majority of your training being executing that technique because you're not going to be using it all the time. Mm. But what you will be using all the time is like pummeling for grappling, for example, things like that. So the large part of your training should be what you're going to be doing for the most part. Mm. And flying shit isn't, shouldn't be what you're doing for the most part. Either. Yeah. Mm. Um, so he was good, right? Yeah. Um, I guess... I, 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 I guess... Because he was 18, it was his first uh, amateur MMA well, fight. It was his first. First one, yeah, yeah. but we, we guess that he's like, could be quite an experienced uh, martial arts practitioner, yeah. I guess, right? Um, and then you've just had your second yeah. fight last weekend? Yeah. Yes. Last Saturday. And that was the dub, right? Yes. It was. Yes. Yeah, I was nice. I was chuffed. Yeah. Um, How did you win? Just first, a decision or? First round TKO. Nice. Yeah, a minute. And 10 seconds left of the round. I didn't take any damage. Um, I took him down, I think, for about 10 seconds and just stayed on top of him. Got him in a rear naked choke for some time. I'm surprised he didn't tap. Um, I didn't quite get my secondary hand tight in behind him. Sparked the gloves. Mm. Yeah, he's, he kind of fought it for fed to him. Um, but then I just kind of got on top and. Yeah, on the pond. Yeah. And the ref stopped it. So, when, I think um, that's the go-to, go-to in amateur MMA that ground, yeah. that ground isn't it? Because they stop. You know that they, they, you know that the ref is going to be stopping the mm -hmm. fight without letting somebody take too yeah, much damage. If you can take someone yeah. down and it, just pin them and just pump them in the head. He yeah. said to me just before. He said to me prior to that. He said, "If I hear you win some pain, I will stop the fight." Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I heard the lad. I hit him. I cracked him. Mm. As he was down, and he did kind of wince, mm. and he did stop it. Yeah, there and then, you know. 
Yeah. You know, not you to know, mention that I was on, I was on top in for a good minute and a half. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to see an amateur who's one and one or, or, or all and one or whatever. You don't mm. need to see him go through no. an insufferable amount of pain and damage on on the mat when the lad's got to get up and do, do his plaster and all whatever else. Yeah, the next yeah day. of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Um, I I had a question. So, you got the ground and pound on him, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, when you're throwing the punch, mm-hmm. did you get any like? Very clean, full on yeah, punches on him. Yeah, yeah you did. a couple. Yeah. Um, and have you ever have you ever hit anyone like that before? Um, like managed to get such like someone on the ground, your full weight behind it, just managing to connect. Yeah, I've had a couple of scrapes and scraps. I'm just thinking because you wouldn't go there in training. No, right, no, no, no. That's definitely something that not I, not full power, right? No, we, I've never gone that hard in training. No. So I just, I just, uh, I think I'm trying to, trying to sort of um, imagine what that must feel like to, like, to, to do that. I, I, I can imagine it's quite. A, um, how can I, I? I can imagine it's quite exhilarating. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were dying to say yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say. I don't want to say. Like, it's okay to like it, like. Yeah, yeah. that's it, isn't it? Right. So, well. It, well this sort of leads on a little bit to what I did want to talk about um, uh, off, off topic, um, off the subject of you guys, which was, um, it, it's aggression. So I'm interested in how people become aggravated or how they use aggression. I'm also interested in anger and um, the difference between, say, like, just your average person getting angry in everyday life and maybe um, letting it out in, in unhealthy ways compared to your um, combat sports practitioner who comes into the gym and maybe um, uses that as an outlet, sort of maybe not like coming in and practicing angry, but the fact that they come in and, and engage in combat sports um, sort of like takes away like the um, the the rise of anger in in everyday life because I, I have heard that from people yeah. that before they've come in they've just been angry angry at the world mm. like maybe wanting to go out in town and start fights and stuff and then when they've uh, come in here after they've done that it's sort of like they they yeah. lose that um, anger. That's probably because you also realise the more you do stuff like this, the more you realise like you're, you're just a very small fish in a big pond. You're the yeah. in like, the world, like, aren't oh, you? Yeah, you're like, everyone thinks they can fight and they, when they, even when they've never stepped into a gym or not everyone, but a lot of people think they can fight and then you come in here and you'll just get mowed oh, yeah, by a will. kid yeah. or by a, yeah. like, by a woman or by someone half your size and they'll just fuck it up and you're like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. Like you could, there's some people who you look at in the gym and you'll think, if I walk past you in the street and you said something to me or my bed, you'd kill them and they'd fucking they'd ruin you do you know what I mean so I think it sort of deflated ego a bit where it's like you're not you're not big and hard like do you know what I mean yeah Is this, if I can say something off the back of that I think I wanted to mention it to you before Greg um, when I've when I've said about when I've, I've coached in, in other gyms as well and yeah but like I, I'll use the helicopter pilot analogy and it's normally because you'll have a person that looks a certain way is a male and they've carried themselves in a certain way and they'll, they'll come into the combat sports gym and um, you'll see that and like I said the helicopter part I'll, I'll say to them after I've normally paired them off with one of the, the females or something like that and they've had an arse handed to them and it's because they've come in with, the, with this kind of like fucking you know this mentality they come in with typical male egotistical mentality and I'll say to them like what, what do you think who's going to happen like if I if I somebody said to me, go and get in that helicopter and fly it for me, I'd say no because I've had no formal training. I'll fucking crash it and I'll kill myself. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But why is it that every man, myself included, feels they've got this this uh, natural ability, this fighting prowess? I can't speak Chinese. I've never learnt it. So why on earth would I walk into the combat sports gym and go, yeah, I'm going to be at the top of the food chain? Why? Why have you never had no fucking formal training? What makes you? Like, why are you going to think that this guy who trains fucking twice a day, six days a week for the last 12 years, is, why, why, why should he give you carte blanche to um, be nice and be, no, come in with the right attitude first and foremost. Mm-hmm. 
So um, I wonder if, like, uh, so let's say as men, right? And I know this isn't a popular uh, thing to do at the moment is make distinctions between men and women, <laughs> but I'm cool with it, right? So you just as, assume my gender then? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, like, as a man, I feel like there's that natural role of the protector, right? Especially the older you get, once you have, once you have domain over your own home, you know, your, your relationships, like you, you're not beholden to your parents or anything like yeah. that. There's a certain, um, th there's a certain, uh, let's say role where if someone did choose to attack you as a, as a man, you have to, um, you have to defend yourself, your home, your, family. your people, yeah. yeah. And the pressure and status that comes with that as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Pressure with the, being able to fulfill that, right? The, yeah, yeah, this pressure, this internal pressure that young men mm -hmm. feel because mm -hmm. they've, they've got to be a certain way, they've got to act a certain way, yeah. I guess the, the, the danger there is real. I mean, like, I don't, it's not something that I particularly, um, like, fear, I'm conscious of on a day to day. But let's say that, you know, um, men do attack other men, yeah. you know, um, we do, we do, we are capable of doing horrible things to each other. So I think naturally, um, I mean, for me, engaging in BJJ, um, it has given me a bit uh, of confidence when it, when it comes to that uh, kind of thing. I think before I did, I was uh, like an, an insecure male. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas being able to um, being able to uh, engage in BJJ and having that bit more body awareness when it comes to combat um, spatial awareness has given me a bit more confidence where um, I think that that sort of insecure side of me ha uh, has subsided more mm. um, yeah I wanted to ask you Ed mm. so the difference between or what you had the dub uh, you had the L yeah and then you got the dub recently yeah um, so I wanted to know what you learned from your first match um, and uh, did it did it carry through into your, into into your second fight your first fight more than anything it was knowing what to expect mm. first and foremost I kind of knew what to expect with the walkout with how it feels to be in, in the cage with all the people watching and your opponent looking in, in your eyes and not like when you're sparring, it's, it's a different look you get, you know? Mm -hmm. And I kind of knew what to expect a bit more. And I think the first time I, I went in there and I was trying to compete, whereas the second time I went in there to fight mm -hmm. and I had a plan and I, I visualised it and I was going to do it no matter what, and that's what I did. I went in there, didn't hesitate. I didn't, like, I came to fight and set out with the plan and executed it, and, and that was it. Mm -hmm. got, got the job done, and um, compared to the last time, I was hesitant. Uh, so, I wasn't even that nervous the first fight, and I had nerves this time, but I think nerves can be good. Um, it 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 definitely did me justice this, this the second time round. So you know you said um, so like the first time you came to compete, second time you came to fight, right? Mm. So um, I wonder if that's like so the first time maybe it was a bit of um, underestimation of the of the intensity yeah, of the combat. So. Yeah, so maybe potentially. Do you think it could have been like? you were used to the training intensity and the, the sportsmanship, you know, you don't want to hurt your training opponent, opponent too hard. So it's like one for one, maybe. Yeah, it's def some... definitely a contributing factor. Yeah. Um, I, th I think you, you want a good balance of both, don't you? Yeah. Uh, in an ideal world, I think if you can sort of meet in the middle between competing and fighting, it depends who you are as well, you know, everyone's different. Um, as we were talking earlier, some some fighters, they're, they're kind of, like you were saying, GSP, he's more of a 
competitive. Well, that's the, the the example, the class example people yeah. use. They talk about GSP, George St. Pierre, being a, a combat sport athlete uh, who was outsourcing his training program. So before, like he was established MMA major, he'd go somewhere for a wrestling, and then he'd go somewhere else for a strike, and he'd go somewhere else for his submission grappling, and he put it all together like that. And then you've got other people where they're just fighting because it's the only thing they know how to do, but they've been all right and they'll make money. And the, the, the fighters by proc, you know, by um, default, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. but GSP has chosen that path and the best way for them to, to get to where he wants to get is by looking at it analytical and dealing with it like a professional sport, which is obviously it is now, but back then it definitely weren't. Mm -hmm. Not to the level it is now. Okay, so... Um Ed has just had a match with Reese, and uh, just going to have a look over that now. Okay, so thanks for joining us. Welcome to Jits Quips. Such a good. Okay, so Reese technically is the more experienced guy when it comes to grappling. Um, Reese yeah. is a blue belt, is that right? Yeah. Reese is a blue belt. Yeah. Yeah, and our mate Ed is a white belt. Ed's a white belt. Okay. He's um, Ed, though, so I'm going to presume he's all out of wrestling. Yeah, 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 he, he knows a bit what he's doing, yeah. yeah. So Ed so is a bit more MMA focused. Yeah. He's yeah. had a couple so they're, of... They're both fights. fighting for the inside space on the collar ties, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, hand fighting, obviously trying to clear the grips before they've made them. And then that's leading into getting the arm drags. Ed goes for a body lock, cold. Probably wants to enter into that using the arm drags, collar ties next time. Nice, he just needs to commit to that though. Like they're still just feeling each other out really yeah yeah really. you're right yeah that's i'd like more of that more level changes in the in the clinch reese nice. is the, stay reese, engaged fellas reese is the bigger lad but um ed still looks jack he's an athletic yeah. guy isn't he yeah. ed yeah more level changes and more commitment on them their mentors lads both years race keeping connection nice. pulls into guard this sort of modified butterfly try not to coach stuffy yeah just in me though. It's in me. Just, just in me. Can't. Just in the leg X now. Switches to. Is that Double leg X. X. And the sweep. That's nice work by these. Good base and good balance by Ed on top. Nice. Yeah. He just needs to watch his posture a little bit there. Yeah, you can see what he's going after with it now, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that hand go. on the mat isn't Triangle, nice. Yeah. Reese is going to get his hips up here. So get that arm cross centre line, he might switch to his arm bar though. This is, this is on either way. Oh. Yeah, posture control on You've that. got that MMA dog in him. <laughs> Reese is getting a bit confused between the two, they didn't know whether nice. to break his posture. Yeah, very nice. GG's Jones. Didn't know whether to break his posture down or to go switch to that arm and extend his hips up. I think mm -hmm. that's where Reese was getting caught between Ed, you're right to raise uh, Reese's hand. Yes. You need a second? Take a second, mate. Take a second. All right, winner. Well done. Triangle. Nice one, Jones. All right, um, so take a second. Nice. That's uh, Reese's, a uh, bit of Reese's bread and butter there. Um, the triangle. Also, the Kimura, he loves the Kimura. He's pretty good off his back at mm -hmm. our level. Um, yeah. So, thanks for uh, rolling for us there, mate. No problem. Um, I think I noticed there, there was like a sort of, maybe a bit of a half attempt at a shot. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if... Um, like, I think from there, because it was a half attempt, it seemed like Reese wrapped your head up there and, and got the sprawl on it, was it? No, he tried to roll, well, he tried to sit into a guillotine, didn't he? Uh huh. And sort of, and then you popped it out, and then he was just straight into, straight into a butterfly guard. That's the one, yeah. And yeah. then from there, he was single leg X, X, closed guard, and then triangle. Yeah. Was it? I slopped you with my arm, but he cleared my arm, didn't he? Yeah. It's, uh, you know. It's all learning. Yep. So what you, <clears throat> excuse me, so what you see, obviously both guys are pretty new to training with each other. Mm -hmm. So you will get a level of um, being tentative anyway. Mm -hmm. And then when you add that to, like you said, he was sort of 
there was a couple of takedown end scenes where they, they wasn't even going to be critical. They, they wasn't a, um, the level change wasn't there in the penetration and drive wasn't there neither. So it was just sort of like coming in to occupy the space, but not doing anything with it, which yeah. led to Reese's collar type that you mentioned. Um, and again, when Reese went to commit to his guillotine when he sits through for it, yeah, he realises straight away, Reese is like, that's not on, shit, and bails and then goes to something else as well. And goes to work off his yeah. back. So yeah. that- In all honesty, I, I didn't feel too, like, threatened when I was, when it did go to the deck. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to say, Duffy, you saying about, um, because of, um, they just met today, Ed and Reese. They're a bit more tentative, yeah. And I feel like um, maybe like a, a last double leg takedown is quite a high intensity movement to pull off. Yeah, so energy expenditure wise, yeah. There's a there's a lot to pull off. Obviously, both guys being relatively new, yeah, to, to combat sports. If I, if I could say that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's gonna add to it. Like you said, they use the blast double for example. Nobody wants to set up cameras, everything else, blast double leg and then get guillotined in 10 seconds. I don't <laughs> care, even if it is just a bit of fun, nobody wants that to I think also if you're, say, if you're, you're rolling with a normal training partner yeah. and you, you've shot um, double leg takedowns on them before, you sort of got an idea of how they react to it. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. um, you're, more, you, you, you're more comfortable, yeah. you might be more comfortable with doing yeah. it. Whereas here, you know, there's exactly. all, all kinds of uh, horrible it's called, outcomes for the for the double. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it gets called a feeling out process for a reason. That's what like both guys like um, Ed um, mentioned that before. So both guys was feeling out. There was mm-hmm. uh, uh, distance management or, or range management that was going on. There's collar ties. There's a feel for grips. There's grip fighting. There's all of these little things, these little nuances that are happening at the time before each player, each guy is going to go. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can actually. Do something here. Yeah, yeah, I've now I've got an idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, I think um, was it tough for you to? I don't think you passed Reese's legs, right? No. So um, kind of floating with an in, in that butterfly. Yeah. So there was there was a little bit for where a while and then I just got sloppy and you snuck in the triangle. That, that was it, really. Isn't it? So he goes in for the single leg X there, changes for the double leg X, gets you sort of trying to get you off balance here. You've actually got quite a solid base there to be fair, like you're doing good not to be swept there, because that mm. can be a tricky position sometimes. Mm. Like Conan mentioned before as well, like when Reese is elevating here, yeah. he, he, there's, a, there's a number of options that Reese, Reese would have had to, to go to there. Um, which he didn't but is that what you mentioned before Colin yeah getting, well you can elevate. go reverse X and then yeah. elevate and get on on the other leg because you can see as he's mm. lifting him with the other legs dead light so that would make yeah. it a bit easier to attack but I guess we can put that doing, down to doing uh, white belt rules that's what he was saying white belt rules yeah, yeah. otherwise he'd have been straight in on the heel hook wouldn't he and I guess like lack of experience so this is the, the, the triangle what I mentioned to you Reese is off camera so this is what I mentioned before so Reese sets this triangle up, yeah. a basic setup for it. Yeah. Now he's got the triangle, he's got the leg hook and he's got posture control and he's on the back of his head, yeah. Now yeah. this is the part where I thought, Reese has let go, I didn't know whether he was going to go, I want to see if he was going to go two hands on the top of the head or he was going to fully commit to this armbar and extend his hips out. Nice. Um, and then your, your base collapsed me and then Reese managed to finish the triangle yeah. off it, yeah. But are you saying that you think uh, Reese should have maybe gone for one or the other. I mean, he's still got the finish. Yeah, he, I, I think, yeah, he, he's still got the finish, but I, I think is the triangle, he, he could have finished the triangle and then he could have finished the armbar and then he did finish the triangle. Yeah. But what I'm saying is in between each, each submission attempt, he was, he was uh, options for him to just, just tighten it up just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Two hands on the head and he would have finished it. Full extension on the armbar, he would have finished that and then eventually he did get the finish, which was nice. Mm. Um, yeah, what, what I was uh, saying before is I think, um, like, of course, the higher level you are, the more you notice, right? Yeah. So you're saying that um, Reese, uh, you feel like Reese could have gone to the other leg when he was uh, doing the double leg X stuff. Yeah, the X um, guard. Like, yeah. That's like the X guard. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's like from the eyes of a from the eyes of a purple belt, right? Where, uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Like, obviously, the, the more the more you do it, the more you're gonna be. 
you're just going to see more openings and more things, aren't you? But when when you're a white belt, you're just like, I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. So You've seen like yourself, haven't you? When you'll Remember when you you first seen any kind of footage and it, it just looks like it's a different language? You just can't understand what the fuck is going on. What are these two trying to even do to each other? And then you notice when you see something, it might be by MMA events, might be in, in the UFC at the weekend, and then you're watching and you'd be like, I can see what he's actually going for. He, mm-hmm. That's why he's trying to do that. So things start to like make sense a bit, don't they? Yeah. There's also levels to that as well. Like yeah. There's stuff there that like other people will be able to see and I'd be like, I didn't even notice that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, it's harder because it's just a very small, small clip, but generally yeah, speaking, do you know what I mean? I could watch a match and be like, oh, I noticed this and this and then a brown or a black belt would be like, well, there's a small detail and I'd be like, I would yeah. never notice that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that just comes with experience though. Yeah. Um, is there, was there anything else of note uh, for you during that uh, match or how do you feel about it? Yeah, I, I feel... I feel okay. Um, yeah, I'm glad, glad that I've turned up. Yeah. I've had two, you know, competitive roles. Two competitive roles, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I've come here and, and we've made it happen. And, uh, Definitely. The underdog I, in, in both uh, matches, right? And, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm a little bit... I'm a bit disappointed in myself that I let myself get in, into that triangle a little bit. But... It's. I think on the camera you can't quite no, see how he side, how he but, gets um, rid of that other arm, can you? Let's have a look. Yeah, because that's something that I've been working on, you know. Yeah, you... I've been caught in them so many times, and mm. it's so, posture that it's it, it goes back to the, just just the basic fundamentals, just good posture. Like, yeah, anyone will tell you like. Um, how do you escape a triangle? Don't, uh, and it's a dickhead answer, isn't it? But like, don't get caught in one. In the first or place, it's, yeah, it's, it's get told that. Yeah, honestly, you can trace back uh, your steps the most most times when you're getting caught or submitted and go, that's where I went wrong. It's that hand position. It's that bit of posture that should have kept. Yeah. It's having me frames like the the amount of the new guys when I'm rolling, I'm say like I'll say to them now. I'll be like, your frames start getting your elbows. To, it's gonna hold you in good stead. Just yeah. keeping these like little. Little minor details. Keeping the elbows in sort of thing. Basics, yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. posture. Make Reach sure you've got good posture, able to good frames. Sorry to interrupt. Reach has also like, done a good job of getting onto his On hip. The side. And that's given his right leg the mobility to whip over the shoulder yeah. then, whereas if you're more flat on your back, it's a bit harder to throw triangles up then. And yeah. it's also easier for the person on top to posture. I think that might be why they've not seen yeah. it coming as the angle yeah it's a good yeah. point because yeah. he's, 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 he's on his hip that's why he's able to go boom and just whip his yeah, leg yeah. over the top of your other shoulder yeah. you know what I mean whereas if he's flat on his back it's it's harder for you to do that he would have mad dexterous yeah. legs to do that then so um, Reese uh, has Reese got the wrist control there as well because when he's going onto his side he's looking to get that floating leg mm. sort of in the, the underneath leg to float up he's to looking come, to clear the shoulder doesn't he to clear the shoulder and then he's also, I feel like he's also probably got that wrist control as well, so that he can just do it easier, right? Without that, yeah, having to worry so he can about clear that arm. his leg a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, he's, the the threat of other submissions is there. He's selling, he's selling it well, isn't he? He's, that's what he's doing. He's selling it well. He's, he's not, he's not showing his hands straight away. Yeah, he controls the wrist there. Doesn't he? Yeah. Before he actually whips it up. And that's, yeah. Um. Boom. Yeah. I feel like Reese is dead good at doing this because he rather it wasn't it wasn't like out and round. Reese controls the the hand here and gets that. He's like gets yeah. his knee dead close to his chest, so he just puts it over. I feel. So the, I feel the pressure the pressure's on the artery from the get go. I mean that that angle that angle for the triangle that's that's how it should be. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's like as soon as he undid the leg, it was game over yeah, pretty much. Wasn't yeah. It? Yeah, you know when you hear people and they'll say I haven't got the, the build or I haven't got the legs for triangles, I can't seem to lock them up and it's, for, for the most part it's going to be the angle a lot of the time, it's not down to the dexterity, it's not down to the shape of your legs, it'll be down to the angle, you shouldn't be square on to your opponent's body because you can't close the gap on the arteries like that, mm. it's got to be proper on the side. Yeah, <laughs> I think obviously if you've got dead short legs it can be hard to to lock your legs together depending on yeah. how big your opponent is as yeah. well if mm-hmm. they've got big shoulders and you've got short slumpy legs you're going to struggle to get a fully locked in triangle but once you do lock it up it's going to be fucking tight mm. 
and then obviously the longer your legs are, it is easy to. Easy, that's why you see people yeah. just some subs, some subs, of body type dependent are going to be easier for some people to get out like you said, body type dependent. Um, but you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't not be able to fucking catch one in a triangle um, because your because your legs are too short. You, you should be able to should be able to find that angle, hit that angle. Um, I wanted to say, that Chris, off the back of what you touched on um, with with the when you said about hitting somebody like yeah. like making contact for with, with with small four ounce or eight ounce gloves and like how does that feel and stuff and mm-hmm. um, what I wanted to say that to that is when you when you're sparring like you've got a like when you said you made an example and said it's not it, it's not like sparring but that and you hear a lot a lot of people talk these days and talk about not sparring or sparring really like and stuff like that and CTE people are more prevalent and like the the knowledge on CTE and brain injuries and but that's one of the things like there's a there is a fine line because you don't want to be getting heavy rounds you don't want to be getting heavy sparring rounds small gloves getting shin kicked across the head you don't want to be doing this multiple times a week but you also don't want the the first time for it to count when you feel the connection is when it's live mm-hmm. when when it's mm-hmm. and and it comes into the visualization thing that Ed mentioned as well because like like I know guys that the first time that they've, they've had the gum shield checked and the gloves and stuff like that is when they're walking into the cage or the ring like no one's ever emulated that no one's ever got mm-hmm. them to raise their hands at the end of rounds yeah. and don't like you don't want the first feeling of uncomfortability to be when you go oh fuck. Mm-hmm. Oh, this cage is bigger than what I had in the gym. This is you don't want that. You want everything to be normal. You want your coach, your teammates, your your, your corner stuff. You want them to be like checking your gummy. This this is like in the the rounds, the the night practice, like like weeks before. You want them to go through all of these things. So then when it is live, that's all part of it. It's all you're comfortable. You've experienced it before. Yeah. You know I mean? think once you've once you've fought so many times as well, that'll that'll be become natural to you anyway. Yeah, you but can actually in. like you said, the first time you do it, you're just yeah. gonna be like, what the fuck's going on here? And you yeah. get a mad adrenaline dump, you don't know what to expect. The intensity just another level, isn't it? Yeah. 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 When the experience is there and you can actually mm. like embrace it and actually enjoy the occasion yeah. like in Scotland. Mm. When you can actually just enjoy what's going on around you and be like this is fucking mad, isn't it? <laughs> People here, the fucking lights going yeah. off. And yeah. Fireworks going off. me music, man. I can fucking enjoy this. Yeah, now. that's the thing. I, I, I really enjoyed... Time, you fucking, I really yeah. enjoyed the walkout. Because yeah. I knew, you know, like... Mm, yeah. The first it's not the end of the world. I'm not going to die. Yeah. I'm not going to die. Yeah. Yeah, can't be worse than the first one. <laughs> and I remember seeing a thing with Cejudo as well, Henry Cejudo, and he was saying to once a week when it was leading up to... It was some sort of title fight. He would have... Whatever time the fight was on, it was at that time he would have um like he'd be in the back getting his his hands wrapped like you were saying. Um he'd have a walkout with the same walkout tune he'd have yeah. on, he'd have like him versus whoever he was sparring yeah. against, it'd be a five, five minute round, a referee, the the other fella would have coaches in his corner, he'd have mm. his coaches in wow. the like it, he, he would like essentially simulate the fight once a week. Yeah. Leading up to it, so that every Saturday night at eleven o'clock, he was he, that was his fight, and then by the time it comes to it, he's done it twelve times already. Mm. So it's like he's coming out and he's like, I've done this already. Yeah. I'm gonna win, and then it's and then he can make it more about the the skill aspect of yeah. it, then rather than focusing on everything else. Too. Emulation, like the emulating things and, and visualizing it, is is so important, mm. isn't it? Yeah. It's so important to the good, process. Good sports psychology, mm. right? Yeah, like all the all the Pavlovian conditioning mm. things, like like. Like what you're saying about the walkout music coming on, mm. like literally, like it's triggered in your brain, like mm. switching something on. Get yeah, you ready. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have incredible, don't you? Like Wait, General Levy. I have had. You yeah, have had once. Yeah, I was like, yes, yeah. Mate, love that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a belter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's good, yeah I've right. had that. Um, electric Six gay bar. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if Jimmy Hendrix, always a classic, isn't it? Yeah. There's a few. Mm. What was your one? This just, one? just this Genesis. Genesis. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. So it's an electronic uh, like, dance team. Okay. Oh, fuck yeah. I thought he was on about to be Phil Collins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know that one. I had to see the old one before. <laughs> um, uh, Anthony, I wanted to ask you, um, what did I want to ask you? Wait, um, so, how long have you um, practiced, uh, trained combat sports? Um, 
I first went into the place for combat sport, like boxing and stuff as a kid aside, in 2008. But then I didn't go back for a year. A year. And then I went back sporadically. So I think I, start, I first competed in 2012. Okay. So I tend to go from like that point. So I was training consistently. Okay. And um, then I'm aware you were in the military, right? Yeah, I was in the army. In the army. Um, six years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to know... Um, First of all, before you, let's say, let's say 2012, 2008, yeah. before you started training combat sports, um, what was, what was your um, experience with, with uh, like hand to hand combat, like yeah. any punch ups or, yeah. uh, no. or in the army you did a bit of boxing, right? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I'm, a bit, I'm a bit older than you, obviously, being 44, so um, my my past probably a little bit more checkered, um, <laughs> but bef when I left the army, I left the army at twenty two, mm -hmm. and I was a young man. I was twenty two, and I was full of insecurity. Um, I was just hitting the the weights, just just lifting big heavy weights, and like I said, I, I was dead insecure, and I'd be going out and like you have a busy social life when you're in your early twenties, don't you? And I'd be going out partying and drinking or whatever else, and I looked a certain way because I was lifting. I'm not the, the biggest guy in the world, but I, I, I fucking juiced up to the girls. I remember seeing a photo you had when, when, you, when you were four. I was like, that's a different person. Just a different I've, seen, person. I've seen a photo of you big. Just, I don't yeah. know if it was like... Yeah, it was like big and ripped. And, like, okay. I looked a certain way, and because of that, people treat you a certain way, don't they? People start like... like you know what I mean? Like either giving you a bit more respect or it might be looking at you the same way or not looking at you. So because you're a, a young guy and you're fucking dead insecure, you start acting off the back of that. Yeah. So to answer your question about fighting, like for, no, I couldn't fight for shit. I, that, the reason why is because I, I wasn't a helicopter pilot. I couldn't, I couldn't fly the helicopter. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you look a certain way and you go out and then you start acting a certain way. So I'm acting like this fucking dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> so this happened, this is what I was telling you before we started, <laughs> so this happened a number of times where I'd, I might have picked a fight or I might have said something and somebody's fucking moved out of my way or whatever cringy shit it is now. And like I said, I see people when they come in the gym and it makes me cringe so much because I think they remind me of, of me, you know what I mean, when I first started or in the early 20s, the fucking big attitude. <laughs> um, but I'd done it one night, I can't remember where it was, somewhere in town. And this kid, this fucking, this, this young lad, he was obviously half my size, and he was like, yeah, come out there, come out. And I was like, that's, that's weird, that doesn't normally happen, you know what I mean? And then, lad, long story, sure, because, like I said, it's embarrassing for me to say it. Well, no, normally, like, you square up, and then and one, just, one's yeah. bouncing, and then it, like... This is what happens, what, what tends to happen is, either somebody, I can't remember the fucking psychology of it, but basically, when you've got two dogs fighting, one, one will cow and turn away, won't he? Or they'll go hell for leather and they'll go, well, I've got nothing to lose. I'm fighting for the fucking life. But this kid has obviously had fighting experience. And uh, he was, like, took me outside outside this bar and fucking embarrassed me. Just punched me head in front of everyone. And then, like, like was, like, it was dead, like, mocking it and all that. It was dead cringy. Oh, really? um, and I got up, to, yeah, I got up the next day. And I, I'd give it all that one to my girlfriend. I'd say, oh, like, fucking this would have happened. I would have done that. But <laughs> it was so <laughs> embarrassing. But it needed to happen. It needed my tra trajectory, my path needed to fucking change, yeah? Did you, so, say, did you say he mocked you? Yeah, he's just like, yeah. The, the like, like I'm, I'm probably getting up and fucking blood all over me fucking machine old shit or whatever it was and trying to fucking get up and he's like fucking sit down lad you didn't embarrass me you know what I mean it was yeah. the whole thing Tough. needed to happen mm -hmm. yeah needed it so then like obviously the next days I've got fucking on I was um, in, in Tasker's uh, sports shop that was used to be in Liverpool and Anfield at the time they had cards on the fucking desk with next generation MMA I don't even know whether they had MMA but it was like next generation and I was like, fucking see what this cage fighting's about now, do you know what I mean? I'll go down there, I'll fucking make myself dead hard, and then I'll, I'll, then I'll be able to fight at the other time. <laughs> so, <laughs> fucking went down there. Training for town. <laughs> so, yeah, that, for all the wrong reasons, yeah. yeah. So I went down there, I was dead fucking nervous, cage fighting. Yeah, I'd seen bits and bobs on Bravo and that. And I went in, and it was the old next generation MMA before they were in the 05 building. Mm -hmm. And it was on Vauxhall Road, and it was fucking, I think old, old school, do you know what I mean? And, I went once, and then he um, was some teenager, like long hair. I won't say it was, but he was a fucking well-known fighter, but he had like long hair and a Pokemon t-shirt on at the time. He was only, must have been 13 or 14. 
and you just like triangle, 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 triangle. Just like, but it's not like now, no way, like one of the new guys or like, or one of the more experienced guys will go like, this is why this is happening. It wasn't, it wasn't like that, I was just getting fucked by this, this, this kid half my age and just like, like fucking hell, and the ego was too much, so I didn't go back for, for another year, didn't go back for 12 months, and then like went and like sort of fucking got my ass handed to me a few more times, but like I said, I didn't really stick until um, I went back in 2012, with my tail between my legs with a different attitude and just like, I want to I wanna do this because it's fun and it's good and it's the only thing I'm really fucking passionate about and I'm not really into running like a mouse on a wheel or a fucking treadmill or lifting weights and... So yeah. yeah, I got into it for all the wrong reasons, but then it made me a better person. Yeah. Made you a better person. Yeah. 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 That's good, I like that. <laughs> um, and then here you are, uh, let's say, 10, 12 years later, yeah. um, a, a seasoned, um, how, can, how can I say it, very experienced, high level, yeah, you, don't, you don't like to say anything, yeah, yeah. like uh, elite. No, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I've been... I've been Training consistently and competing and, and coaching since 2012. Yeah, yeah, so over 10 years. Um, let's say, like, I don't know, I don't know how it actually is, because because of my level, like, I only see things from my perspective. And like, to be honest, out of the year and a half that I've been training at the moment, I'm not coming in very much, right? So, um, but it's like when you need still fucking it. It is, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, um, yeah. We're sorting it out, getting a scan soon. But like when I when I look at you, Duffy, I'm like, uh, when I've seen you train, I'm like, who who could beat you? Like I I, 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 I can't imagine anyone like yeah. being it. Like like um, but you you come to training with like a certain amount of uh, is it is it aggression? It's a high intensity. Yeah. So when when you roll, I remember even as a as a white belt, um, you'd you'd bring that high intensity to me and I loved it like that I remember this is what one thing that I um, do that I've that you did to me um is like you know when you're trying to pass the legs right so you're going that way move that way going that way and then you just run around in a circle on me and I'm like trying to get there and eventually you're already past the legs and I was like it's that easy yeah so, so it can be that easy you know mm. if, if if someone's used to going like a quarter that way and then a quarter that way, but they're not used to fucking getting all the way around back there. Yeah. Just run around them. And just fucking... <laughs> yeah. So I love that, mate. I, I do that. Um... I remember you're, you got your blue belts um, recently, didn't you? Well, it was a few months back now. Yeah. December. Um, I can remember having a conversation with him. Well, he's not with us anymore. He's dead now. But the lad that I was having a conversation with him was like, fucking hell, man, I've got to get me blue belt this year. I've been at it for years, man. I thought that was like the pinnacle. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. thought, if I get this, it's like a, a legit, like, Oh, people will, will know. People are still at that insecurity. Yeah. People will know that I'm fucking I'm legit because I've got a fucking blue belt. You think a blue belt's like yeah. a fucking wizard when you start, don't you? You're yeah. like, mate, you yeah. just get yeah. the smoke belt, and then you get your blue belt, and you're like, I'm, I'm not that good yet, am I? And then it's just, it's, it's always, it, that never mm. stops that because I was like, purple belt, I'll never be that good, and now I'm purple belt. I'm yeah. like, it's oh, fucking shit at this. I'm it's like, great. <laughs> 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 it's, it's great that it it's like that. Well, to get to the it, point where it's like, hey, I'm actually like, obviously yeah. you've got to take it into a bit of perspective, but it's it, it, that never stops that, I don't think. I yeah. feel like you, it'll literally be like, oh, am I ever going to get me black? And then you'll get your black belt in 10 years, and you'll be like, there's no way I'm not good, am I? But yeah, you will get that. Boss, it's great though, isn't mm. it? Good that, that it's like that. Yeah. That it's never ending. It's it's, it's not finite. Yeah. You're not and even after you get, get your black belt, belt, you can always improve. So yeah. your belt's just but it's like that product. thing. Like there's people who are gonna when when I get promoted eventually, there'll be people who have held and competed at the rank of black belt longer than what I've trained. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they might have been a black belt for twenty years. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's incredible yeah. to think about it, isn't it? And then there's also yeah. people who are black belts <laughs> who have been black belt for 20 years and they get smoked by some purple belt from fucking... Like, like, yeah. like, it's, not on, yeah. like it's not... Or a brown mm. belt who's yeah. just ridiculously good, do you know what mm. I mean? Like, that, that can't happen, so... Yeah. No matter how good you are, you're always going to be shit. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you sure that's not a negative affirmation? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It's holding you back, that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, is, is this a thing, if you're not... A black belt, you're a white belt. Nah. I mean, like, so Kev, Kev said, um, it's like a pyramid, right? Where the white belts have the most to learn and they learn a lot in the, yeah. in the white belt. Yeah. As you get 
higher. Layer cake, he calls it, don't he? Layer cake. Yeah, yeah, the, the film analogy. Mm -hmm. As you get higher, there's sort of like less to learn, but it's about refining the details or mm -hmm. figuring out the details. And then none of this bottom pyramid works. It's only the black, the black belts like that, yeah. are, that are doing like the real uh, jiu-jitsu. I'm probably fucking that up a little bit. And, no, uh, I, I know what you're saying, but it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because I, I remember uh, like we've all heard the advice of like only do the shit that works on good people. But that, you can't because that how's that gonna get you through like your, your lower ranks of sparring and training and stuff like that if i'm only doing like legit because let's have it right like the fundamentals are fundamentals for the reason i think they work and they work a lot of the percentage of the time but you need to be practicing these other things or these things that might not work on more experienced guys as well to get you there and i mean get you there in like your confidence in your rounds and you know you need the sort majority of, of the techniques work don't they it's just when to use them and, it's and if you use like and obviously if you're like if you're trying to buggy choke someone and it's like <laughs> they're way better than you it's like it's not gonna work you yeah. know what i mean when people hyper focus on niche moves like that it's like that's not gonna work like but, the, like this like the spin a wheel kick thing mm. before yeah but as you're like mm. sort of rising through the ranks you've got to find what you're good at what yeah. subs you like but the, the majority ask, of the subs like they're all fundamental in a way, aren't they? Do you know what yeah. I mean? But there's going to be a couple that you're like, okay, I'm quite good at that, yeah. so I'm going to focus on that for a bit, or a style of passing or whatever, do you know what I mean? So there's, mm -hmm. there's a million different ways you can pass the guard. Mm -hmm. But it's an so, art as well, isn't but, it? So you should be... In, in that moment, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In that moment, it's like, is that the right way to, to, to do that technique in that moment? And like you said, there's different ways of doing it. Like some people would just be like, I'm never going to use that. Yeah. Different there's, parts, there are, yeah. yeah different, there different are some things I think yeah. I'm never going to use that, and I know I'm never going to use it. it. Doesn't mean that you're not good, or you you're like. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to get to a certain level because you don't mm. know a specific niche move. Do you know what I mean? You still get to a good, very good level. But at, at um, black belt uh, level, you're I guess you're supposed to, or you're expected to have um, a pretty broad knowledge yeah. of jujitsu, um, all all the main stuff, right? Like defense, attacking, yeah. passing, sub. You should be very, very well rounded. Like you can't, you can't, you can't be a black belt and not know how to pass someone's guard, no. or retain guard, yeah. or yeah. escape or arm guard, or whatever. There could be like small holes in, in their knowledge, but really they should have a very broad understanding of yeah. a broad, lot yeah. of the techniques. Have a broad understanding of it, of course. Yeah. yeah. What do we make of them handing out these belts? You know, you watch the UFC. You know, but Alex Pereira has just got his. Black, black, belt. black belt was it? I don't know. I don't know what his his background is. After not counting things, yeah. you know, it's mm. like and they're doing this. He, he's been not. He's not been in the jiu jitsu game long, has he? Nah. No, no. I I don't know. I don't know. I I, I don't know. What Alex, I I know that. If Alex Pereira was here now, Duffy, we'd, we'd drive <laughs> down. I'd get pulled, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, like, yeah. try and show jiu-jitsu, like, for, for try and well, show him would, would I try and, like, showcase jiu-jitsu, like, like, this is the, the, the greater combat? Nah, well, Alex Pereira, you're not a black belt, mate. Because <laughs> like, I don't agree bang. with it for a start. I don't, I don't agree. I don't think jiu-jitsu is the superior martial well, arts. Anyway. What do you think is? Um, I don't know. Are we talking about that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, the thing is, nowadays. No, just out, of, just out of curiosity, which one is the super, super? If there is a super, nowadays though, MMA is, is as a whole. You know these like young kids now. Yeah. They're coming up doing the whole spectrum yeah, from yeah. the get go. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? There's yeah. no like certain. It's different because when the UFC Sean first started Murray. years ago, it was a wrestler versus a boxer, That's and this it, was yeah. to see Great. what is the best match for. And essentially, mm. that did show the. Jiu-Jitsu was the best because Hoist yeah. was just choking everyone else. No yeah. one knew about it as well. No yeah. yeah, but n now it is different because if you are not well-rounded in MMA, you're going to get exposed by someone who has either has good grappling or good striking. I like, mean, it, it, you will get exposed at some level, and then there's obviously yeah. these kids who are coming up, and they're the not just they're like, not just a specialist in yeah. Muay Thai, and then they start learning how to grapple or vice versa. It's they're fucking good at everything. Yeah, and then that thing that I saw Sean O'Malley do, yeah. where he he takes the guy down, or I think he throws him down. Is this um, in a MMA? It, it's in a fight. I can't remember who it was with, though. Okay. I think I've seen him do it a couple of times where he throws the guy down, he turns around like he's going to walk away to let the guy up. As the sure. guy is, like, like feeling non-threatened by yeah. Sean O'Malley getting up, when uh, Sean, like, doubles back around and clocks mm. him in the face. I think, like, that's a really cool um, sort of aspect that is... Sean O'Malley 
uh, utilizes because he's been in the game, the MMA game from a very young yeah, age. So he's IQ. like high IQ. He's like, mm. that's a moment. Right? A bit of showmanship that as well. Yeah, a bit of kidology like, going on, mm, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. 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 So when we, we, you're talking about like um, people going into the sport and uh, M- MMA being a, a, a combat sport in and of itself mm-hmm. with all the disciplines combined out and the years kids coming up, um, it's not just now, but it's been going on, it, it's been a, a martial art or a combat sport in and of itself for a long time. People used to talk about Rory McDonald as being one of these kids that is, tri- and Rory McDonald is he retired now? Like that's how long ago it was. He was one of these first kids that started mixed martial arts as a child and then come up through the ranks. And Rory McDonald's getting on himself now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's it's not like it's not like this new thing. It's but not new. Yeah, it's yeah. not a new. It's not a new. Yeah, it's not a new. I thing. think it's just more the popularity of it now. The popularity yeah. is, but I think from a um, from a self development point of view, I think specialising is the better way to to get good at stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like. Spending like three months in Thailand, do you know what I mean? Mm. Spending, spending, going to Iowa where for fucking you're wrestling or whatever mm. it is. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like specialize on that, and even in the the, the combat sports, you can you can specialize again in that, can't you? So with your striking, I'm just gonna work on my clinch game. Just gonna work on on me fucking clinch game and knees and elbows. Mm. Or with you, with your grappling, I'm just gonna work at getting up off me fucking back. You can mm. work work that for six to eight weeks. Mm. But I think you've got to specialise. I think when you're trying to get good at everything broadly, I think the the increment for it is too fucking slow, man. Mm. Too slow for, for my attention span. It is anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So taking deep dives into certain aspects. So, yeah. yeah, and then it's in your last pocket. I've done yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I struggle with that sometimes yeah. though, because sometimes I feel like, like if I'm trying to, so I was like, right, I'm just going to pull guard for six weeks. Yeah. That's what in my head I was like, I'm just going to pull guard for six weeks. Yeah. And then it's like, you come in and it's like, depending on what the coach is doing and then, do you know what I mean? You come in and then like, Harry or Nate will be like, right, we'd say we're doing guard passing. So it's like, you yeah. can try it, like yeah. you can try it maybe in your rounds, but then you do a round and you do it with someone who's half decent, and then you go, you revert back to type. You yeah, go back to your yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? So I feel like some, I, I, I agree. It's, 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 but it's hard to do that sometimes. I think. Do you know what? Do you know what makes it easier? Injuries. Mm. Getting injured and forcing you out of your wheelhouse, forcing you to have to train round. So the, the reason I use that as an example is because when I've had injuries in the past, and that's when I noticed it the most. It is when like I was doing everything, and I was like. Shit, I can't grapple. Right, I'm just gonna have to do striking. Mm. And then I was just doing me striking, and then I was like, fuck hell, shit, shall I just compete? Because all I've been doing is fucking is striking for months and months. I haven't done no grappling, and that's what led to that. And then I get injured, and then I'd be like, all I can do is grapple now. So I'd have to do that for a few mm. months. And then I noticed with me, exponentially, I was getting better by just having me training in chunks like but that. Did you, just, like, did you not feel on. when you were going back to the other discipline that you kind of almost forgot yeah, that, yeah, like, no, you have to shot, relearn yeah. it? Yeah. No, you I, like, I, I kind of feel as if I progress up with momentum. Yeah. I have to get, like, yeah. it's like snowball effect for me. I have to keep on top of things. and mm. I found If I neglect something, it feels as if I go backwards. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I found my I skill fade. I, th- I thought the risk reward was better doing it like that. So right, okay. I found my my skill fade. If I, if I train chunked, together so I've done done striking for like uh, like two months yeah and then went back to doing striking and hand grappling together the skill fade off me grappling would be less than if I was to do yeah, everything together time. like oh, okay. you know what I'm saying so I yeah. benefit more me knowledge and skill gained would be more than what I'd faded off on the, yeah, on the other it. disciplines yeah mm. all right um lovely it's a, it's a pleasure to talk about this with you gents mm. um I think um one, one last thing before we go, I wanted to uh, make this a little feature, um, we'll see if it works, but the last couple of episodes um, we've talked about uh, why, uh, why you love BJJ, right? Um, so we've already established that we all love uh, BJJ. Um, you can, we can say combat sports in general as well. Yeah. Um, but like my reason last week was because um, it's primitive and like what I really meant by that is that it, like it's primative yeah if you know what I mean so it's um, it's uh, two gorillas naked gorillas wrestling basically basically <laughs> so <laughs> in, 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 I assume yeah. they're gonna be naked anyway with yeah, them being gorillas yeah. 
Skin on skin. Spin on skin. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Two Scottish guys killed, <laughs> bare chested. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't you don't need any technology. You don't need any technology at all, right? Um, you don't need your phone. Don't, you don't need anything. All you need is, let's say, God body given, or even what what we've evolved to be, two primates. You need you need another primate. Uh, let's say, body. preferably yeah. a human being, right? Yeah. And um, and then you just you get to it with with uh, with with your hands, with your arms, with your legs, with your yeah. head, with your amazing with um what um with nothing uh, so you don't need anything you don't need a ball pardon you don't need a ball you don't need or a ball. but mm, say, yeah. say like if society is telling you you need the car you need the house mm. you need the phone you need all of this right all, all you need the money right for jits you don't need any of that yeah, yeah it's you a very strip bath right? isn't it yeah, yeah. Mm. um so that's what i meant but um to be honest i haven't thought of another thing uh, that uh, reason I just haven't thought of it um, but is there anything that pops into mind uh, just quickly about uh, why you love BJJ it's the levels the levels to it intrigues me you know like maybe we've been talking today and you know rolling with two guys different levels and yeah, you, when you when you when we were talking about the black belts and the higher echelons of of the game it just intrigues me like what would you buy? Getting to that level, you know. It's like mm -hmm. looking back then and uh, the progression. Yeah, just yeah. I think that appeals to a lot of guys. Yeah, as well. the learning yeah. aspect of it is probably the main thing because even though there's going to be points where your your progress might sort of stagnate and you feel like you're going down, you're not actually going down. Like not all progress is linear, so you're not going to yeah. go in a straight yeah, line. Yeah. You're not going to go in a straight line from here to here, but you're still. Going up, picture. even if sometimes mm. you'll come in and a week and you'll be like, I'm fucking getting smoked by everyone. And then the next week you'll come in and you'll be flying, do you know what I mean? And you'll be like, Yeah, do you know what I mean? So the that's always the, the trend is always upwards, right? Yeah, as long as you're consistent, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you're just going to keep turning up and then eventually it's it's going to go up, you're going to get better. And the feeling when you, you're like, Fuck, I am getting better here, like that's a good feeling, I think. Mm. I like yeah. it. Well, there's people. There's people you might have like had competitive roles of years ago, and now you're just smoking them, and you're like, it's just because they turn up all the time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then, like you said, the levels as well, mm. because there's people who are so much better than you. You're just like, they're only good because they just turned up. Yeah. Fucking six days a week for ten years. Mm -hmm. It's not like mm. a, it's, it's not a magic pill. Yeah. It's just fucking turning up and training. Yeah. I liked. I liked what you were saying there. I did have one in my head, but I'm gonna just piggyback off what you were saying instead like the the, the, prim, the primal thing yeah. um so i'll throw in a couple of cliches as well so like it's true it is it is true you know it's a cliche um but uh, i don't know any other sports but american football the super bowl like the super bowl fucking everyone's there there's a million people watching it and fight breaks out in the crowd so where's everyone looking now they're not mm. watching the fucking fellas kicking the weird shape ball around, are they? Oh, Everyone's focused fight. on that. Mm. Everyone's watching that. The purest form of what, uh, without being sexist, one male's dominance mm. over another. Mm -hmm. And obviously through society and culture and everything else, that's become more civilised and more, okay, so now I'm not beating the shit out of you. Now I'm going to gonna, um, emulate being the shit out of you by putting this ball in a net. And that's my dominance over you. My my mm. team's dominance over your team's dominance is done by us putting that in a basket or a net or whatever. And it's like I love it. I'm fucking so passionate about it. And I, I say about like if you're on a desert island, the reason you're doing it and you're not doing it for status because you want to be perceived a certain way on social media. Because if you're on a desert island and a fucking another boat rocks up, like how long before you're showing this person who's on this other? There's only one more person on the boat, by the way. You, you're you're on your own, yeah. You're on your own. Boat turns up. How long before like you're showing them stuff so you can move around with them? How long before you're sparring with them and you're doing these things? And it's it's not because you want to be seen a certain way. It's not because of um, because you know you want to be a fucking fighter. It's because like that's what you want to do. That's super enjoyable. It doesn't matter whether anybody else on the planet exists. If I can do this. With another with another person, yeah. 
Dun, dun, that's that's perfect for me. I'm just I've just never been happier. Mm. That's like your sex and fighting. You ne- never in a, a happier state because you can't think of it, anything else. You're engulfed in. Did yeah. you say sex practice. and fighting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you should be completely immersed in them, them practices when you're doing them. You should be giving <laughs> everything to that practice when you're doing it. Do you I, are you thinking about sex while you're fighting or? Uh, I, I like to mix and match yeah, <laughs> so when, when I'm in the bed, when I'm in the bedroom and thinking of you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Take me back and just feel sort of like poking into my spine. Sort of, yeah, <laughs> more than the flaccid side. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I wondered if, um, is, if, if fighting with a man is the opposite of having sex with a woman. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I like yeah, wondered that with. in my mind. It's like, yeah. it's like. Like say say having sex with a woman is like a creation, like, <laughs> you know. Like I used to you're being make, hypothetical. Yeah, instead you're of like, I don't know where you're going with it though. Yeah, yeah, you're making a baby, right? Yeah. Whereas when you're you fighting, you're life. trying to take, take, take <laughs> someone's yeah. life, right? Yeah, um, I like that. Maybe, maybe we'll bring right. that up again tonight when we. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you wait there, we're on the campfire. <laughs> yeah, um, going on an adventure. So mm-hmm. you you don't want to tell us what the other thing that popped into your mind was about it, quickly. Um. I don't know, probably some fucking bullshit to <laughs> say about there's no lying on the maths and yeah. Relying on the maths. There's no lying. There's, there's no, no lying. lying yeah, you can come in here, like yeah. I said, you can have all the muscles and tattoos and everything else and you come in here and you've you've showed your hand, you've showed that you're a certain way and you want to be perceived a certain way and then get to find out exactly what you're about in a bit. Yeah. It's yeah. a nice environment to be in, isn't it? Especially uh, the, the boys. boys. Like yeah. do you know what with I mean? The, you get on yeah, yeah, you get on well, I get on with pretty much yeah. everyone here. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying everyone's been best mates, but yeah. all the people are nice they've all got individual on the map when it comes to it's it's your sort of dealing with your own progression but it's very much a team yeah, yeah. team people, aspect people, there's very much a team atmosphere. aspect to it as people well kid, even though you yeah. try and kill each other and then you would be hugging each other after so yeah. I like that mm. well you like to people care about you like genuinely care about you mm. and it's the, like the happiest I am when I'm excuse me away from your kids away from your family is, is when I'm in here yeah, like that's that's the like I don't do anything else. Mm. Whether you've had a good day or a bad day, like coming here is probably going to be like for me personally. Anyway, it's probably the best part of my day is yeah. coming here. It's going to be a good more part often of than not. Yeah. And I've had a shit day in work. I want to come to Jiu-Jitsu. I've had a good day. I'm looking forward to Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. So no matter what it is, I'm happy when I'm here. Basta. Um, like maybe that. gents. Uh, so if you if you come on in the future, or if if the thought ever pops into your mind, like. Like another thing, why you love BJJ? Just remember it, and because uh, I think there's like there's so much you could yeah. say, there's so many reasons, right? For, yeah. For everyone, but um, all right, uh, we're gonna leave it there. So uh, thanks for coming on, and um, yeah, if you made it this far, or if you if you've already stopped watching, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all of that business. <laughs> uh, you stop watching, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> if you stop watching, don't watch another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talk to you. <laughs> um, all right, gents, let's cut there. Cheers. Thanks, Greg. Cut it. Yes. Nice, brothers. Yes. Yes, mate. Yes, brother.